One of the most powerful features of a bandsaw is its ability to carve shapes, but cutting curves isn't like drawing lines. It's not freehand art. The blade has limits, tight turns, thick stock, dense grain, all of it pushes back. And if you don't plan for it, that blade's going to bind, burn, or blow right past your line. That's where strategy comes in. Today, you and I are going to make relief cuts make sense. A relief cut is a simple straight cut made into the waste area of your project before you start cutting the actual shape. Its only job is to let the waste fall away or release a section so the blade can keep moving. When the blade has no room to move, it starts to fight the wood. You'll feel resistance, sometimes you'll smell burning, or hear the motor working harder than it should. I was lucky here. I made it through by backing up slightly and wiggling through the turn, but I've got a thick curved carbide tip blade on the saw. If I used a thinner one, I could have broken it halfway through, and I've done that before. It's loud, jarring, and dangerous. Here are the results of the cut. You can see burn marks here. I drifted off the line, but this fought me the whole way. Using force over finesse is bad practice, and sometimes it ends badly. But beyond the blade safety, the real reason relief cuts matters is that they unlock tighter turns so that your blade can have the space needed to move. And sometimes it's not even about making tighter turns. It's just about allowing the blade to be released. With relief cuts, you want to cut out as much as you can so you're not making a bunch of cuts through a lot of really thick stock. Making all those different cuts just dulls your blade. So now before I make my relief cuts, I'm gonna go ahead and cut this waste off. Now that I've removed a big chunk of the waste, I can come in here and focus on the different points that I'm gonna to need to make those relief cuts. Here are both of my cuts. You really can't see much of a difference. This is the one that I just cut, but what really mattered was how it felt making the cut. It was smoother, easier, the blade wasn't stiff, and I stayed in control from start to finish. There's a little experience that comes with the process, but it all comes down to geometry. I could stack a bunch of cuts and work my way back through them, but the last thing that I want to do is to make a cut every eighth of an inch, which dulls your blade, wastes your time, and it really makes a mess. Of course, the last example was easy. You could muscle your way through it if you wanted. But what I really love is when a pattern looks impossible and still cuts like butter because the relief cuts are in the right spots. What I've got in front of me now is a geometric nightmare. Exterior edges that would make even the most seasoned bandsaw user pause. I'll keep using the three quarter inch blade, not because I'm a masochist, but because I don't have any other blade sizes for this bandsaw. This last S shape, and we can barely call it an S, had simple curves that let us break it apart at easy relief points. But today, ladies and gentlemen, we face a battle. And in this battle, we'll need strategic outposts, strongholds to push back against the fight this blade is about to give us. This is no straight cut, no easy victory. We take it piece by piece. First move the table saw because a carbide tooth blade will chew through bulk material faster, last longer, and cost less to replace. This is where we send in the heavy artillery. To mark my strike points, I use a measuring stick. That way I know exactly where to make my cuts, no guesswork, no wasted cuts. Once those outer defenses are down, we flank the remaining scraps with the bandsaw. No pencil lines here, just freehanding big diagonal slices to clear the way, leaving nothing but the flame itself. And this is where experience comes in. Knowing your blade, how it flexes, and the radius it can really handle. A wide blade needs more relief cuts than a narrow one, but tight curves will always demand extra tension, no matter the size. But you don't have to be a seasoned captain to get a perfect win. Just send in more troops. In this case, that means more lines in the areas where the fight looks toughest. Along this line here, I can do a few cuts here and there. That'll work. That. That. And again, it's getting a little bit tight. So I'll do it like that. Now I'll quickly make the marks for the rest of the battle plan. I've got most of this marked. You'll see that I don't have the inside area because in the next step, we're gonna do that. On inside curves, those areas that cave inward, you'll see me making more cuts. That's because I can't swing the blade away from the shape like I can on an outside curve. On the outside, I can pull back and give myself room. On the inside, there's nowhere to go, so more relief cuts are the only way to keep the blade moving freely. If you're doing interior work on a pattern, a big problem you'll run into is turning sharp turns. 
That's where what I call a pivot pocket comes in. By drilling strategic holes, you give the blade room to turn. These aren't just stress relievers, they take the anxiety out of the cut. These inside areas, especially over here and over here, are tricky, but don't let them rattle you. This is where we switch tactics. A drill press or even just a hand drill with a Forstner bit can give you the breathing room you need. These pivot pockets open up space for your blade, letting you handle interior cuts, and set up the relief cuts you need to finish the shape cleanly. So what I wanna do now is take my Forstner bit and put it inside the inside area, and I'm really just gonna look for where the curve is not going to hit my shape, and that looks good right there. And I'm just gonna tap it where I want to make those cuts. And I'll come over here, and I'm not gonna be able to move around a whole lot in here, so this is gonna be a good place for me to place a bit. Obviously, I'm not gonna be able to move the blade inside of this hole, it's too small, but it does a little bit of the work that I'm not gonna to need to do later on. With these tight corridors, I'm obviously not gonna be able to follow a straight cut line. Instead, you'll want to rely on nibbling. Hey, all's fair in love and war. Just don't do this with your good resaw blade, since it can throw off the set on the teeth and dull it unevenly, which is fine for cutting shapes, but it'll bite you later if you need it to track straight against the fence. And now, with the battle won, it's time to sweep the field. Band saws aren't usually finished ready, so I'll clean the rest of this up now. <laughs> Relief cuts are bandsaw 101 when it comes to technique, but they're so incredibly powerful and sometimes so easy to forget about. Before you go chasing the thinnest blade on the market, grab a pencil, draw a plan that makes your blade work. A huge thank you to my patrons who help keep this work going. If you'd like to be a part of the team, or just throw a tip in the jar, there's a link down in the description. And remember to keep making things.